Welcome to all you need to know before imaging this or that. In this quick video, we're going to show you some tips and tricks for how to get the best possible image for this target. Let's, Let's go. go. So you're going to find M50 in the constellation Monoceros. And do you know what Monoceros represents? It sounds like mono means one and Ceros is something. It's actually a constellation uh, named after, uh, well, in the mythology, is after a unicorn. Mono means unicorn. No. Mono, <laughs> mono means one. Yes, one, and I guess Ceros means corn. Whoa. Corn. <laughs> like rhinoceros? <laughs> yes. Did anyway. I just teach you something? So Monoceros, uh, unicorn. So look for a unicorn in the sky and M50 will be in there. Uh, so it's located about 2,870 light years away. Uh, it's not too far from other deep sky objects, uh, like for example the Seagull Nebula, uh, Thor's Helmet Nebula, my favorite, uh, the Rosette Nebula, Sirius, the so brightest star in the sky, and several clusters around that area. The best time I'm to capture. Sure okay. Okay. The best time to capture it is in winter. And M50 is. Um... Unfortunately, not a popular target amongst astrophotographers, um, but maybe it's also because it doesn't have a cool nickname too. Maybe it's a, that's a common trait, I don't know. It does have a, a magnitude of 5.9, meaning that it's very, very bright. And it has about 200 stars around it, but it's not visually impressive, which is probably why it's not captured as often. Yeah, 200 stars is like, it's almost nothing for a cluster. Uh, like for example, M5 or M M13, they have like 500,000 stars by comparison. So this is, although it's very bright, it's not visually dense and impressive. And as you can see on this uh, whiskey picture, uh, most of the stars are blue. You can't really see this cluster with your naked eye. And also the fact that Sirius is so bright and so close does not. You help. just you can't see it. Yeah. Uh, M50 does not look amazing at all through you know optics of various sizes. That's a little rough. It's a bit rough, yeah, but it's true. Sorry, M50. <laughs> and um, you'll just be able to spot a few stars here and there. Uh, you know, it's, it's not impressive. For, it's, it's a fact, okay? Uh, <laughs> TM, TM. But if you're going to capture it, um, you know, for your list of objects, then try to pick uh, whatever largest telescope you have. Uh, the bigger the better, bigger aperture, bigger focal length. Um, is going to be a good idea to have a, a big telescope for this target. So we personally spent uh, one hour imaging this from a board of war zone. Um, and if you want to get a cleaner image, you probably want to spend double that amount of time, so two hours, um, just so that it looks a little bit better. But if you're imaging from a board of one zone, uh, you should, and with good equipment, you should have enough data to get a really, really nice image of M50. Here, for example, is a single shot of 30 seconds taken from our equipment from a Boreal 4 zone. So as you can see, it's not too bad for a single shot. And uh, once again, this is a very simple target to, to capture, kind of. I mean, it's, it's broadband, so you can use either a DSLR camera uh, or a cooled camera. Uh, it, you know, it can be a color camera, a monochrome camera. Uh, it's, it's a broadband target, so you don't have any... You don't have to use no any narrow filters. filters you know. All right, so let's face it. M50 is not very exciting to capture, but you got to add it to your Messier catalog. And as an added bonus, it really is just easy to, to capture and process. So that's already your leg up with that. If you use a small telescope or a camera and lens, uh, you can maybe even be able to fit in the Seagull Nebula in your frame too. And uh, so yeah, go ahead and show poor little M50 some love. Uh, <laughs> that would be great. We want to see it. And uh, good luck. And we spent 28 hours on this specific image from home. We suggest you do at least four hours uh, at the minimum for this target, uh, especially if you are from the city. But in our case here, we, did, we spent 28 hours, which gave us this result. We hope this video helped you get to know this target just a little bit better and helped to prepare you to image it. We would love to see your image. So go on our website and find this object on our gallery and attach your image to the comment section. We would love to see it. And by the way, online, we have a bunch more tips for so many, so many objects. So go on there and check it out. So we'll catch you guys next time and clear, clear skies. skies.